Hey everybody, this is Will at Flex Rods and Customs. On episode one of Project Breakdowns, I will be breaking down our very first project that we actually completed. So just stay tuned and I'll let you know what we have been working on in the shop, what we have going on for future plans. And if you like any of this type of content, material or whatever, just hit like and subscribe. I'm still new to this stuff right here, so it's going to be an adjustment asking people to do things for me like that. But anywho, just stay tuned or whatever, and I'll break down this uh, 55 Bel Air project or whatever that we did probably eight, nine years ago now. What we have right here is a 1955 Chevrolet, also known as one of the Tri-Fives and also one of the greatest cars ever made. It is a 210 Post. And what that means is obviously it has a post to where some of them are hard top and it does not have a post. Also, <clears throat> a little tidbit of information that I was taught earlier, whatever, with the Bel Air that we're building. These doors are shorter. The hard top doors are longer. I did not know that until my mentor told me. Also, this area is shorter. And what it does, it's just like a post car is on like a Nova or something, it makes the roof line look taller. Even though on a Nova, the roof line is taller. It just makes this one seem more taller and not as much of a swoopish style line. Now, as I mentioned earlier with the other, well, with the 210 Bel Air, being that it's a post and this is a hard top, the hard top's door is actually longer. If you look right here and look for the other one, this is a little bit shorter, this area right here. The door is longer. This area right here is a little bit longer also because it gives it more of a swoop where the other one, it's shorter right here and it makes it seem like its top is more pronounced and higher. Just a little extra information and everything about the difference between a hard top and a post or post type Bel Air. Everyone has their favorite. I could care less. They all look good to me. Any 55 Bel Air looks good to me, whether it's post or hard top. That's just my opinion. I dubbed this one Plain Jane for the simple fact that it had no chrome. It is as plain as you can get it, as easy as you can get it, no frills, no nothing. But, whenever I designed this car and we were building it, I wanted it to seem like it was low budget on the outside. But I wanted it to seem luxurious on the inside, if that makes sense. So I guess we can get a little closer and talk about a little bit more about it. About being plain Jane, as I dub it. With most of these cars, they have chrome coming right here, going down the back. And maybe a little spear right here and also chrome right here i did not want this on this car for the simple fact that it didn't have it from factory a lot of people do like to drill holes in their stuff because they like the chrome again i'm a simple guy and a plus a lot of people and there was one in particular it was yellow and white went on bear jackson one car a year it has a spear right in this area there's two different types. There's a short one and a long one. And most people get it wrong because they don't take the time to resize the holes because the holes for all the molding are usually oversized. And if you ever look at a whole lot of people's spears right here on their doors, they're usually a little bit low. Instead of they just taking the time, making the hole right, they just put it on there and let it go. I don't like that. I'm a perfectionist. And... OCD will drive me nuts. Excuse the mess. If the skid is at the beginning, you see why there was stuff in here. Anyway, I wanted it to be more luxurious on the inside of the car. So whenever I had, whenever I designed the interior, simple and clean. As I said, simple and clean. Two-tone tan leather, diamond tuck simple low car shifter 
simple console nothing too special clean headliner clean back seat ties all the way into the door panels I mean it's no frills it's all business but they're soft the seats came out of you would have never guessed it in a Zuzu rodeo don't go telling everybody that because I want to get more. But in a Zuzu Rodeo seats with the headrest cut off. I'm not a big fan of that billet steering wheel. But that's what we had at the moment. But I do have another one that is a retro 14 inch stock style 55 Chevrolet steering wheel. That I'm either going to paint or my mentor Woody is going to paint. Another good thing about this car or whatever that whenever we was building it, it has a nine inch forward narrowed rear end. It's been narrowed two inches on each side and the frame has been notched. And what I mean by the frame being notched is as you can tell, see how narrow it is? The frame used to come all the way to right there. Now it doesn't. Even though it does still have the stock leaf springs up under it, we might change that right there in the future also. But if you look at it at the moment, you can't get no better stance than that. That is gorgeous. And what is powering this car is a 4, 468 big block. It probably makes a little bit over 500 horsepower, if that. Nothing too crazy because we wanted it to be built to drive just simple and clean I want to go power brakes but manual disc brakes work just fine and plus with the valve covers being so tall unless you get a six or seven inch booster and possibly an offset you won't be able to get this valve cover off without being able to take the brake mass cylinder off just for is fair warning for any future builders out there but again simple and clean simple and clean that's the best way to be whenever you're trying to build a car this brakes all the way around wheel wood kit I mean not gonna say we're gonna take it on an autocross or anything like that but it stops and it stops way better than factory drum brakes but I wish there was really more and everything that we could tell about it. But like I said, man, just plain Jane, 55 Chevrolet, 210 Post. One of the prettiest cars ever made on this earth. I hope y'all like it. Again, if y'all like this type of content, I guess share the post, like and subscribe. Again, that's weird for me to say. I'm new to this type of stuff. But, well, I don't mean to go so dang soon or whatever, but I'm running out of memory on my memory card at the moment. But if you like this type of content and everything like that, and you'd like to see more of our builds and the builds that we're going to be doing thus far and stuff like that, I will try and keep it posted. I will try and keep it up to date. Unfortunately, I can't videotape everything or record everything, you know, because of my job and stuff like that right there. But I can do still images and, you know, put them into a motion stuff like that right there but again if you like this type of content and enjoy it i'm just a car enthusiast i'm a car builder me and my dad out in our shop in waynesboro i mean you see what we got to work with we don't have fancy tools i'm trying to show folks that you don't need fancy tools and stuff like that right there you don't need a professional paint booth all you need is just a little bit of knowledge a little bit of know-how and a little bit of gumption and elbow grease and the creativity and thinking outside the box and you can do just about anything that you want to with what you got well anyway y'all take it easy keep cruising be safe treat one another with kindness any other little trademark phrase whatever you can think of but anywho y'all just be safe out there i'll see you later peace